The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiecki is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Gwilda Wiecki's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Science of Magic or endorsed in any manner by Gwilda Wiecki, Relmar McConnell Media Company, its affiliated networks, stations, or employees. Welcome to the Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiecka, a program dedicated to uncovering the unified nature of reality and humanity's ever-evolving place as truly galactic beings. For more information on the Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiecka, visit us online at www.thescienceofmagic.net. Welcome to the Science of Magic, a place where science and magic come together to transform fact into evolving truth. We're coming to you through the leader in responsible, paranormal, and alternative science broadcasting, the Exxon Broadcast Network, xzbn.net, and can also be found on our website, thescienceofmagic.net. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. This hour, we'll be exploring Breakdown. We stand at the precipice of a remarkable adventure the adventure of human evolution. We may have been here before, but never in recorded history, and never exactly like this. By simply being alive during these poignant times, we've become the chosen ones to steward in an entirely new way of being. The wheels have turned, the cycles progressed, and we're moving from polarized existence into unity consciousness. What does this mean to us as individuals and as a people? We have the opportunity to move beyond the current system, which has served well in the past, but is growing increasingly restrictive. We can now become the co-creators of our experience and work magic on the physical plane. In unity consciousness, there is no war because there's no cause for war. There's no loneliness because there's no separation. There's no poverty because we can manifest at will. This may seem a bit fanciful, until we examine the underlying cause of conflict, lack, and separation. In order to see where we're going, it's necessary to reframe where we've been. As we expose the underbelly of past and current existence, the information may seem a bit negative, if not paranoid, which is not the case. All has been perfect given the lack of expansiveness we've had to work with. But now we're moving into a time of greater light. We've been living in a period of polarized existence, right, wrong, good, bad, love, hate, and so on. By necessity, our systems, as well as our personal relationships and realities, have built themselves around these concepts. In order to manifest, we need not only have positive and negative, but neutral as well. Positive and negative circling around a neutral pole generates electricity. All electric generators are built around this simple concept. Any time we take a polarized stance, movement freezes, and we become disempowered. When we're disempowered, we cannot manifest for ourselves and become reliant upon the external systems to provide. These systems pit one fraction against the other, disempowering the individual. As a result, they can siphon off the energy generated through the manipulation of the polarization of the masses. Our consumer-driven society promotes polarization by advocating poverty consciousness and the belief that we must compete with each other for basic needs. This results in loneliness, war, and separation. Yet, lack and isolation are an illusion we can transcend by coming out of polarization and entering into unity consciousness. In so doing, we eliminate the middleman, a.k.a. the system. The wheels have turned, ages changed, and we're now entering into an area that promotes enlightenment. The frequency of this new time does not support polarization. Pressure is being brought to bear on all the old structures built on the old polarized format. We're experiencing a breakdown of all that was, paving the way for what will be. This breakdown not only affects systems around us, but those within us as well. Personal beliefs, identities, and realities are being challenged. We're confronted with a choice. Either cling to polarization in the face of unity until we break down, or let go of the old reality. It's time for each of us to examine our stance, 
patterns, and beliefs as we embrace the neutral, unifying force of unconditional love. Our guest this hour, Jody Hershey, is author of The Call of the Day and Thoughts to Consider with Love. She graduated from the University of Miami with a BA in education. Her expertise is in holistic education for adults and children. Jody is a trained hypnotherapist in basic, advanced, and past life regression. For more than 15 years, she's provided support as a hypnotherapist, psychic intuitive reader, and spiritual counselor. After this commercial break, I'll introduce Jody, and together we'll map out the adventure of a lifetime. So don't go away. You're listening to The Science of Magic. Prior innovative episodes can always be found on our website, thescienceofmagic.net. The scientists and the mystic have been on an age-old, relentless search with one thing in common. They seek truth. Their paths converge in the 40,000-year-old practice of shamanism, an ancient science delving to the quantum level of life, facilitating healing, manifestation, and evolution. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, the founder and director of Path Home Shamanic Arts School, a unique Colorado State certified occupational school, training shamanic practitioners and teachers. We also provide classes for empowering personal lives through shamanism. Our certification classes are in week-long segments, enabling international participation, and online classes and long-distance shamanic healing sessions are available. Come discover the science of magic in the limitless world of shamanism. www.findyourpathhome.com back. This is the Science of Magic, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. Our guest this hour is Jody Hershey, author of The Call of the Day and Thoughts to Consider with Love. Her website, joyjourneyofyou.com. Jody, thank you for joining us on The Science of Magic. Thank you for having me. I really am looking forward to this conversation. Me too. You know, there's a lot of talk out there about the end of days or a shift in reality. What can you tell us about that? Um, it is the end of a thought process. It's the end of an era. Um, it's a new dawning. Um, it's not like we're going to end the world. That's not what I feel is going on out there. What I feel is going on is exactly what you said prior to me is that we have to break down to come to. And we're asked to clear ourselves so that we can be part of this new new world, so to speak. You speak of a time of enlightenment. What do you mean by that? Well, it's a time where we clear ourselves and we come to understand um, what is important and what is, uh, what what consciousness is looking for from us, um, which is to clear ourselves, be true to ourselves, and to be re- responsible uh, tenants of the planet. Mm. Where do you get your information about this, Jody? Um, I channel it from. <laughs> 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 well, I channel it from a higher source. It, it, you know, it, it's my guide that I get this channel from. Okay. Do you do you work shamanically with um, helping spirits? No, I don't. I, I don't. I don't do that. Um, basically, what I do and work with is uh, empathetically, and what I get um, shown through the person. I'm able to read people quite quickly, um, and, you know, it's that kind of a thing. I don't um, 
do he, you know, like personal healings on people like that. So you're getting information through your clients, is this correct? Yes. Okay, so through hypnotherapy and such? Yes, through hypnotherapy, uh, through discussion of self, um, through sound and color healing. Um, I do after a, a therapy, after a discussion, and we relax the client and uh, balance the chakras and um, tune them up, so to speak. So how does, how does this get you the information, the leading edge information you're going here about our time of enlightenment and whatnot? Well, I, okay. <laughs> I don't like, I channel through Jesus. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that's my inf- where I get my information from. Okay. So what, <laughs> what exactly is causing the shift? What's causing the shift is two things. One, we're having um, a frequency shift um, in the planet's frequency. And also, we were coming into a time in order for us to be able to handle this new frequency, we need to break down uh, all things that don't work within ourselves so that we can be clear to work in this new um, energy and this new way of living. Um, so how can you be sure that, that you're actually channeling Jesus? How how did you come come about this? Well, that's that's my contact. I mean, I can't. How do I come about it? It just I I I get it comes into me. So did did you contact him or did he contact you? Uh, both. It was both. And he you're... came to me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, how long ago did that start happening for you? Um, I'm going to say probably 20 years. Wow, that's quite a while. Mm-hmm. And are, uh, are you sure it's just Jesus himself or spirits that represent him, or is it, are there angels involved? My angels are involved. There are spirits that represent him. Um, but basically, he, he and I have a conversation, so to speak. So what was the first contact like? That might have, must have been pretty exciting. Yeah, I mean, um, what happened with me is that I had gone through a crisis period, and I was somewhat, well, I was, I was lifted out of um, where I was and carried to the other side, so to speak, and that's what that was about. It was, I experienced grace, and that's how, you know, the relationship started. Was it kind of like a near-death experience? Uh, it, it was a death experience as far as my consciousness. You know, I had to let go of everything in my thought patterns, um, so that I could be healed. How did, how did he identify himself? How did he prove he was who he was? Um, I, <laughs> there is no, pr- I mean, I don't think you need pr- I can't say I need, it just is, you know what I'm saying? It's not like he, I have to ask him for his credentials. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's just a lot of disembodied spirits out there, and if I'm, you know, I like to try to find, be sure um, who yeah. I'm talking to. Yeah, Yeah. well, I mean, and I feel it, too. If, it, if it's a spirit that's not supposed to be there, I, you know, I move away from that, obviously. But I have not had that um, experience with this, ever. And there, you know, there's, have you been able to prove it to yourself, or, you know, what proof do you have? Well, it's, it's the proof of where my life has gone since that, my first experience of grace. So, do, have you seen that other people experience that same thing? Yes, they can, absolutely. I mean, I'm not special, <laughs> It's just, yes, people have their own personal contact with their higher source, and um, they can get information for themselves as well. So the times that we're moving into, has this happened before? You know, what's, what exactly is, you know, I asked you before, what's causing the shift? What, you know, what astrologically or scientifically is, is creating this for us? 
Well, it's a, what's happening is we're, we're trying to move out of third dimensional thought process and into a fourth dimensional, fifth dimensional thought process. In order for us to get to peace, we have to break down and clear all things that aren't working anymore. So, you know, it's what's happening is scientifically the frequencies are changing and it's speeding up time, so to speak. And it's, it's speeding us up as individuals to start um, clearing out all the systems and all things within ourselves that don't work. What's causing the frequency shift? What's causing the frequency shift? Scientifically, I'm not sure about that, how that all works. Um, but it is going on at this moment. There's other people that talk about that. Okay, but there's no proof out there? Do you know? Um, I'm sure somebody like Greg Braden has, you know, what he would see on that particular thing. Um, There are people out there, yes, that know that. Many native peoples call this shift from the fourth world to the fifth. And you're speaking of a dimensional shift. What's the difference? Uh, dimensional shift means that there's there's different um, sort of rules and and that are with different dimensions. Like ego doesn't belong in the fourth and fifth dimension because it's not necessary for us to o- only come from ego. Okay, so, so we're would, asked. To, would you mind defining uh, ego so we're on the same page? What do you mean by ego? Okay, ego is that part of ourselves that, you know, live in past, present, future, um, who's that talking entity in our heads all the time that says we're good, we're bad, and if, if what, if I have, if I don't have. Um, it's like the never-ending train of what if and can I have. Um, and that type, our ego was really given to us to navigate on this planet. You know, it's not there to be who we are. So we're, we need to clarify within ourselves what is our ego self and what is our soul self. And we're asked to come from our soul self at this point in time, which but is don't more you, coming from... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Now, if it's to navigate here and you're channeling mm-hmm. Jesus to bring information through, don't you have to come through your ego to do that? No, I come from through my soul self to do that. But then that doesn't navigate it here. So how do you get it through to here? Well, the ego does get it to here because I, I have to write it and I have to translate it. So that that's a navigational thing. It's it's in order to express I need to use my ego to write down the message. But it doesn't mean I live my life um with just the ego of, um, I have a big house, I have a great car, uh, those kind of things, material things. Ego comes from material. So you channel from your soul self through Mm -hmm. your ego, Mm -hmm. excuse me, from Jesus, through your soul self, through your ego. There seems like there could be a, uh, when you go from the soul self to ego, how can you be sure that it's coming through clear if ego is ego and soul self is soul self? Because you feel it. If it's not right, you it won't. You feel it within yourself. You know, if it's not right, it it you you. It's like I don't know how to explain it. it it's like rubbing you the wrong way, so to speak. It won't be clear, and when it's clear, there's no question. Um, within yourself that that's what you you've heard you feel it your intuition's telling you your higher self connects back into that um, energy and that's how you know you know I, I feel it I don't you know if it doesn't feel right it's not right but our feelings are subject to our belief systems which are subject to our ego how can you be sure that your feelings are, are clear at any given time well, I because I, f- I feel it within myself. 
you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's my my body will feel it, and it won't. You know, it's just it'll tell me where I'm coming from. You know, like and you learn to identify what is the ego part of you and what is the soul self of you and what is your your higher self connecting to. So it sounds like a major process that you have to clear yourself before you can bring stuff through clearly. And you can only yes. bring stuff clearly as clear as you are. Mm-hmm. All right. We're going to have to take a little break. We'll pick up with this on the other side. Jody and I will return to our discussion on the flip side. We're coming to you through the Exxon Broadcast Network. Don't miss the other fine shows and hosts on XZBN.net. My favorite is the Exxon program with Rob McConnell. You're listening to The Science of Magic, thescienceofmagic.net. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. There's more enlightening information to come, so don't you go away. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. Did you know that shamanism has been around for 50,000 years and practiced by all indigenous cultures? These ancients understood there's more to healing and health than just the physical. All four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, must be addressed in order for us to enjoy healthy, abundant lives. To find quality shamanic healing you can trust, you need look no further than Path Home Long Distance Shamanic Healing Program. All Path Home practitioners have been trained and certified through Path Home Shamanic Arts School, a Colorado State Occupational School and are handpicked, personally trained by me, Gwilda Wiecka, to uphold the excellence of Path Home's long-distance program. Live abundantly. Schedule a shamanic session with me or one of my quality practitioners today. Call 303-775-3431 or visit findyourpathhome.com. This is the Science of Magic, a place where magic and science come together to promote enlightenment. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. Our guest this hour is Jody Hershey, author of The Call of the Day and Thoughts to Consider with Love. Jody, um, you wrote The Call of the Day, and it is a book on um, spiritual evolution at, during this time. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. and But you got your information I'm, from the first segment, um, second segment actually, you got your information by channeling from Jesus, Correct. taking mm-hmm. it through your soul self and bringing mm-hmm. it into ordinary reality or into your books through the ego. How can you be sure where you're getting inf- your information? And you you know, how can any of us be sure? Um, so you're, you're, you're coming through your feel, your felt sense, but what about the rest of us? You know, what, how can we tell that what you're bringing through is accurate? How can we tell what we're bringing through is accurate? Well, because that's what, it's a feeling that we're, we're asked today in this time period to move out of all mental states and start to learn to ask ourselves questions from the inside out not the outside in. It's how, how are you feeling about it? You know, you'll know intuitively if something's not right. Okay. You who's, know, you, you'll, you'll who's feel asking, it. Who's asking us to do it that way? This, this time period, consciousness is bringing forth this energy. It's okay. not a particular person. It, it's, it's, it's what's going on in this evolutionary period. Okay, okay. Who, and, and, would, would you mind describing ahead. consciousness for me? Okay, so consciousness is the um, state that is above. Uh, we choose to come from consciousness on a daily basis, and consciousness is coming from our higher selves, our spirit, and our connection to God or our, our, our higher source. 
So what I'm, you know, what I experience, given what I'm doing, is everybody says they're coming from consciousness, but everybody seems to have a lot of a different, different messages, and a lot of them are diametrically opposed to each other. How can we tell what's right and what's not? Only you can decide what's right or what's not. It's an individual process. When, when somebody's um, sharing with you, whether it be a book, whether it be a conference, whatever it is, if it doesn't feel right for you, it's, it's not right. So, you, you know, we're asked to feel our own feelings and to come from our own personal truth. And we all have our own personal truth. And it's accessed through our intuition. So it, it's not like you have a, a, a teacher, so to speak, that this one person. I mean, it, it has to feel right for you. And if it does, then you, you explore it more. Or you take that in and, and see how it feels and where you want to take that. What has to feel right? Whatever information that's coming to you let's say today, if it feels, if certain things that I say feel right for you, then, then you'll, you'll say, hmm, I'm going to ponder that thought. Okay, if it doesn't feel right, you negate it. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not for you. So if I negate it, um, how do I know I'm coming from, you know, maybe it triggered me, maybe it doesn't feel right because it, it set off something in me. How can you tell the difference? So you have to keep you keep looking at that experience and that feeling. Where what is it that you're seeing that seems right? What are you feeling that doesn't seem right? You question yourself more in depth to say, "Aha! Uh -huh, what what was making me feel that way?" So you is know, this about? Through, go ahead. Is this about personal processing then? Yes. Don't you need guidance for that? Mm. You can, yeah, I mean, you can, yes, but you don't. We all have it within ourselves to do these kind of processes. It's just it's just tuning into it, you know, and you can tune into it by getting quiet, going to a, a meditative sta space, if you can. If not, just sit quietly and start to learn to feel and hear through your higher senses. So feeling is the intuition. Hearing is through your soul, your higher self, and its connection to the universal source, whatever that universal source is for you. I can't tell you what, you know, it's, we all have our own universal source. So it's not the and same universal truth. source? Excuse me? It's not the same universal source for everyone? Isn't universal mean it's for everyone? It, it is for everyone, but everybody has their own way of connecting in. Do you know what I'm saying? Everybody has their own process. You're not everybody gets there in the same way. The light's you know, only is the message the same? Yes, the message is the same. Truths are truths. There's no arguing with it. It just is. But it's up to us individually to find our way to the universal source, which is universal, so that we can create a better life for ourselves and a better planet for everybody involved. So we're all connected in one place or another, correct? Correct. So as an empath, personally, so if mm -hmm. I'm in the presence of someone, I can feel what they're feeling, and sometimes it's not easy to tell what's mine and what's theirs. How do we start getting clear enough to make these discernments to run our entire life on? you start to get, you, ha you have to start to get quiet because if we don't have some quiet space to breathe and to process what we're hearing and seeing, then it's just running around in circles. So it, it all starts with learning to get, have a quiet space somewhere for you to breathe and just come down off of all the information and then Meditate, if possible, learn how to meditate, and um, you connect in by that to begin with. So what is the universal source? Where, where is it? It's above and beyond all that, that we see, the universal source. 
it's above and beyond. It's an energy that is not um, physic. I don't. I, it's not physically on the planet, but we carry it with us. So what's happening is we are asked to tap into our higher source so that collectively we can create these new paradigms that are are being shown to us now. We're asked to create a whole new new world. Who's asking? The universe. And is the universe related to universal source? Yes. How? <laughs> it, what do you mean how? I mean, I, I the universal source is creates the universe. I mean, it's it's let's just say it's creation. Do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's creation. Okay. So the universal, yeah. So if it's creation, I, I'm I, I'm lost. I'm lost. I don't understand. Well, I mean, these questions are very difficult to answer because. You know, you're, it, it's abstract. You're asking abstract questions. So I'm, I'm doing my very best to explain it to you. I know you are, and I'm trying to make it real clear for our listeners because if we're being asked to connect with universal source, if we're being mm-hmm. asked to channel this into the world, we need to know where we're going and have a better idea because we have to be able to come from the mental before we have to come out of the mental before we can go into the spiritual, I would think. Correct. It's you, you go in and out of that process. When you need your mental, you come into the mental and, and you start to create. You know, you start to create uh, whatever you want for your own self, how you would like your world to look, and then start creating as well with your community and how the community would, would like to see things happen. You know, and then it goes bigger than that. And, and it's that's how it is. Yes, we talk, we speak mentally, but we're coming, the message is coming through our intuition and our spiritual guidance. So do you and believe, then we bring it out. Do you believe we create our reality? Yes, I do. So how can we become more conscious of it? By being coming conscious of yourself, becoming conscious of who you are and what you are doing uh, what you're doing here on this planet what what is your what is your connection what is it you want to contribute um, you know so you cre- you do create your own reality so if we have you know negative 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 we're going to see negative 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 if we start to talk to ourselves which is called self-talk and start putting in positive messages where we have negative messages, we can start to create a more positive life for ourselves and for others. So it's just a mindset? Correct. So how do we change our mindset, and how do we get that into the soul? I'm, <laughs> I'm lost. Okay, because, okay, the soul and the mind... The soul is the soul, okay? The soul is what cre- is connected to the universal source of all that is, which means we all have our own personal connection to the universal source, and we connect in through our intuition. So we use our intuition, and we feel our way through things, and this is how we start to come to know what it is that feels right for us and what we feel we'd like to contribute to the world. So how can we tell that our soul is indeed connected to the universal source at any given time? Because you feel it. It's a knowing. You have to go inside to know, to feel all these things. You know, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a quiz. You know, you're on your own journey. This seems like it's kind of based on personal belief, but it, how can you prove that it's fact? How can people have confidence that they're going to be getting accurate information? Well, it, by doing it, this? It, is there is there fact in the fact that we believe in God? Is that a I'm fact? I'm sorry, but you you asking me? 
yeah, is it a fact that we know there's a God? Is that a fact? Can we read it? Do we know it? How do we know it? Well, there's all sorts of scientific um, formulas out there that prove that the uh, it's scientifically, or excuse me, mathematically impossible for there not to be one. So there's some science behind it as well as just uh, hearsay or belief. Okay, so, but that doesn't prove to me there's a God. I know, for me, I know there's a universal source because I feel it and I connect into it. If you're just coming from a mental state... We're going to have to fact, we're going to have to take another break. Jody and I will be back shortly, so don't leave us now. This is the Science of Magic, the Science of Magic dot net, the place where altruistic professionals of science and the esoteric create common ground for the betterment of our world. We're brought to you daily by the leader in paranormal, spirituality, and alternative health programming, the Exxon Broadcast Network, XZVN dot net. Wilda Wiaka's latest book, The Science of Magic, Book of Mysteries, Volume 1, is the first book in a series based on her writings that open every episode of The Science of Magic radio show. Drawing on the subject matter of each guest, and armed with over 40 years' experience in shamanism, 35 years in alternative health, and degrees in psychology and religious studies, Wilda introduces relevant and leading-edge information that supports spiritual evolution and personal empowerment. Rich with wisdom and inspirational quotes packaged in digestible segments, this is a book that will pull you from cover to cover. It will also serve as a daily inspirational reading for years to come. The Science of Magic Book of Mysteries, Volume 1, is available at our website, tsompublications.com, amazon.com, and wherever fine books are sold. Welcome back. This is the Science of Magic, bringing together gifted people of service to the world. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. Our guest this hour is Jody Hershey, author of The Call of the Day and Thoughts to Consider with Love. Jody, we've been talking about, I'm trying to bring this to a point where your average individual can make sense of what these times are that we're entering into, why we are things are changing, and how we can participate. Okay. Um what I'm trying to say is that we all need to start going inside of ourselves, our feeling self, so that we can come and find what are the truths for ourselves and what are our own answers. Only individually can you take that journey. I, nobody can take that journey with you. You discover who and what you are through your own inner self. So we have to get quiet in order to start feeling our way to what we feel the truth is. It's not and a fact. It's not a fiction. It's a process. It, it's something, it's a journey that you choose to start to go on, and it starts with yourself and how you relate to the world and the universe and the universal source of all that is. It, it's how individually we re relate. I, I can't make you relate to that. I'm just giving you what what I my knowledge is and what comes through me. So you address finding the living or um, finding and living our personal truth. Is there more than mm -hmm. one truth? What's the difference between personal truth and universal truth? Well, personal universal truths just are. Okay, they're. they're sort of laws that, that are out there universally that, that they are, no matter what. Personal truth is what have you as a soul come here to experience and express on this earthly plane. So that's what that is personally. 
what have you come here to do? What do you want to, you know, be here expressing? And that we should find that and start living that. And through living our truth, we connect to higher information and sources. So can you give me an example of uh, a universal truth? Um, not off the top of my head, <laughs> you know, I, I, at the moment, no, I can certainly email you or call you back, but off the top of my head, I, I don't, I don't have that. So basically you wrote your book from personal truth. From my personal truth and from my understanding of the universal source. And it was you, cha- it was sent through me to write down, and that's what I did. And, and who who sent it? My higher guide helped. It came through me and gave me these messages, which each and every one of us can do by becoming quiet and start to look at our inner lives, and through that we start to be able to connect to your higher source. Is it God? Is it a tree? Is it whatever it is that brings you to uh, the essence of who you are and the essence of what you would like to see your world be? You know, how would you like your children to be? You know, that kind of thing. So It's an individual how, journey. Uh, what advice do you have for people to engage this um, individual journey? What's, what are the first steps? The first steps is to make a decision to start to clear all things within your life that are not working for you anymore and to clearly start to write down um, in a journal what, you, what works for you and what's not working for you, why are you in that place, why should you leave that place, does this work for me? Um, how can I make it better? Or is it good the way it is? And move through your own um, stuff and start to clear out um, what is true to you and what isn't and how you're going to make your truth um, come to light. Um, so that's where you would start it. And you start also take the time to Get quiet in, in the morning is something I do and go into meditation. Um, at night, you can make a gratitude list. You can go into prayer. Um, you know, so you, you want to start trying to be quiet and connect in so that you can feel what it is you want your life to be. So you're talking about meditation to get quiet and to go in. Where are we going into? Your, your true self-self. Your higher source. And how does a higher source relate to universal source? It is a stepping stone to, it's connected to the universal source. And how can we, we tell? We're, we're all can, connected to the universal source. It's a feeling, that's how you can tell. It's a feeling. I can't give you a, you know, a, a encyclopedia on it. I can only tell you where we are at today is that we need to come from our intuition, our feeling self, so that we can be clear on what it is we would like our world to look like. So it's it's not a mental, you know, thing. Yes, we can translate it into the mental, and we will feel if that works or not. So it's feeling, feeling, feeling. It's not thinking, thinking, thinking. So what do the other members of your immediate family, you know, those you live with, feel about Universal Source? They have totally different opinions. So we're all going to have totally different opinions? If I'm a Christian and you're a Jew, should I tell you to be a Jew? Do you know what I'm saying? (laughs) I can't tell you how you relate to something. Do... Do we all have certain basic understandings of life? Yes, we do in my family. Do we believe in uh, the Torah or do we believe in, in the Bible? You know, those are personal journeys that you choose to filter 
your life through. And that's your connection, if you choose it, to your higher source, whatever you want to call it. Do you see those religions as being different pathways to universal source? They are, if that's mm-hmm. what you choose. But de- they definitely, it is definitely a pathway if you choose to use religion. I personally think religion separates us. So I would prefer not to have it as a religion. I would rather say my universal source or um, God or whatever it is. I, I don't break, for me, that's just me. For you, for anybody else, they may have, they're very connected to the church. And if that's their way to their their truth and their universal source, then, then go that route. There's no so- judgment. So is the universal source we're talking about actually what most people refer to as God? Yes. And then there's divinations of that, and that's, you know, what does that look like? Is that, are those divinations uh, the personal truth? Yeah, it's what, it's a personal truth of how you choose to find your connection to God. So if we're all living a different truth, how can we relate to each other? Because it's all the same. When you get done with it, it, it all, it's all the same. We're not separate religions. We all are one. What we're doing is finding a pathway to come to the truth of the oneness of the universe and that we're all connected. So do you think everybody's going to evolve in this process? Or what's going to happen to those that don't engage? They'll, they'll continue to be in, you know, whatever's going on out there. They'll live in the ego, ego self life and, and, you know, it, it's a different picture. What's going to happen to them? You know, (laughs) I, I don't, I think everybody's on their own journey. Some do not want to take that journey and they'll go on in the lives that they live in. It may, it will probably begin to get more difficult because things are changing and stirring up our our cells and our lives and our country and, you know, um, things are changing. But it's totally up to an individual whether or not they want to take that journey or not. So it sounds kind of isolating and lonely to everybody be on a different journey. Where can we find well, agreement? That, that, but the, the, the point of the matter is, is we're all trying to evolve so that we can become more of a oneness instead of a separation that we've created. Okay, we're, we're the, the point is to come to oneness so that we can have peace in the world. Okay, that, that's what we're all looking for, I believe, is to have peace. So... Yes, a lot of us have different religions, and that's the way we get there. But as we grow in our spiritual truth, we will see that we are all one. One is a good thing. Time flies, and we're out of it. Jody, thanks for being with us. Our guest this hour has been Jody Hershey, author of The Call of the Day and Thoughts to Consider with Love. Her website is Joy journeyofyou.com. This has been the Science of Magic. Remember, you can always listen to the past thought-provoking episodes on our website, thescienceofmagic.net. Until next time, dear ones, may you be blessed with knowledge and comforted with love as you walk your path to enlightenment. <laughs>